Right, so we're going to look today at using Photoshop and also using Adobe InDesign together. Okay, so I've got a bit of a page that I want to incorporate a photograph with. I also want to incorporate some text in here. So what I'm going to do in Photoshop initially, I want to cut the picture out, remove the background, place it into my InDesign document and then run some text around it and also apply what's called a text wrap around the text so the text is forced away from the image. So let's come back to the image here. So because it's quite a complex image in terms of the contrast between the foreground and the background, the selection tools might not work too well with it. So I'm going to use the actual pen tool itself. So some advanced features here that we're going to be using today. So I'm going to use my pen tool. I'm going to make sure in my control bar I've got path selected, not shape. Because what I want to do is draw around my image. Okay, I'm going to click and click and say click and drag when I want to have a curve. Okay, it takes a little bit of practice this. Some of you may have used this before in some of my earlier tutorials. But I'm going to come all the way around, clicking and dragging where I want to curve. And say when I've got a big sweeping curve like this, I'm going to do a slightly bigger distance from each of the anchor points there. So it comes around nicely around the little tip there. So it gets a bit more intricate. We can put them a bit closer together. And the good thing about using the pen tool when we're creating the path to use for the cutout is all of this is editable. Okay, which I'll show you in a second. So as I come around, if I've not got it quite right, I can always come and adjust it a little bit. As I'm coming around here, let's let's just get around. So the main thing really, so even if you aren't as uh, had that much practice with the pen tool, just make sure you get all the way around and join up where you first started. See so a little circle comes up there when I roll over the first anchor point. So I'm just going to click there to complete the path. Okay, so you can then see the path all the way around. So let's say it looks a little bit dodgy there to be fair. So I'm going to come down here underneath my pen tool. I've got a tool called the direct selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to choose my direct selection tool. And with this one, I can come around and pick up all of the anchor points that I've just made and manipulate them around a little bit to get it a bit tighter. So if I've not been quite perfect with it, although to be fair, I've done a pretty good job, if I do say so myself, come around here, we can tighten it up a bit. There, click on the curves, say so move the little handles if you want to curve it in a bit more. Okay, so I'm, once you're happy with it, um, what we've done is create a path. Okay, so I need to save that path in Adobe Photoshop and then from that path I can make a selection which is going to enable me to select the parrot and remove it from the background. So it's the paths panel that I need which is just here. Okay, so on my paths panel, let's pull this out and have a look at it actually. I can just double click on the path there and it's going to enable me to save it. Okay, so I can save it as a name because what we can have, we can have lots of different paths on the same image. So if it's a certain area I can name it, but save for this one, I've only got one path so it's pretty obvious what it is I'm doing. So click OK. And then once I've saved the path, in the bottom of the paths panel, look just there, if I click on that one, it makes a selection of the path here, okay, which is fine. So I could cut, copy and paste that into another document. Um, I could move it, I could put it into a new layer. But what I'm actually going to do first, if I do cut it out, it's going to be quite a sharp cutout, okay. So there's another little tool I'm going to use first just to kind of soften that up a little bit. So if I come up to select at the top, We've got an option here which is select and mask, okay, which also used to be known as refine edge in Photoshop. Some of you used it before, but say it's changed to select and mask, and it's a much more uh, effective tool now. They've kind of updated it a little bit. So I choose my select and mask, and basically this is giving me a little bit of a, a, a preview of what it's going to look like when I've cut it out, okay. And if I come into the view modes at the top here, like I can change it for different backgrounds. Okay, so to be honest, the one I prefer is the one that says on layers. So it just shows me exactly what I have and what I haven't got. So I mean, the cutout looks okay, but you can see it's a bit sharp. There's a bit of the background still in it there. Um, so what I can do is come down here. I can smooth it out a little bit. As I smooth that up, you'll see just the edges start to get rid of those pointy edges of the pixels there. So you can see it's just starting to smooth a little bit here. Now feathering is probably the most effective thing I'm going to do here, not just because it's a bird and it's got feathers, but what it'll do, it will actually just fade the edge a little bit for me. You can see it's just starting to blur the edges of my selection there. And I can also shift the edge in a bit. Okay, so we can crop it in and move it around there. Oh, gone a bit too far there. Taking a bit of time to catch up with itself, I think, this one. 
So if we just leave it to, to catch up, you can see I've just got to put a, a little bit of a feather, a little bit of shift edge there. Okay, because it's a bit of a big image, just, just wait for it to catch up with itself. But you can see now, just by moving a little bit around there, it's got a nice soft edge to it. Okay, so I'm just going to come down a bit lower because there's one more thing I want to do. We've got what are called output settings here. Okay, and in my output settings, I could output this just to the selection, which would enable me just to copy and paste it or put it into another document. But because I just want to use this parrot as it is, I'm going to come down to where it says output to, I'm going to come down to new layer. Okay, so when I click on new layer, I'll show you what happens next when I click OK. So I'll come into my document now. So you can see I've got a new layer on top. So I've got my original background layer, which I can turn off, and it's created a new layer with my parrot cut out on top. Okay, so I'm just going to save this to the desktop. Oops, excuse that. And then when I click on my desktop, I can save it as a Photoshop file. Okay, so just save that as the parrot on the Photoshop file there. Keep it all layered up. I don't need to flatten it. I don't need to save it as a JPEG or anything. I can keep all the layers and just save it there and click OK. And then when I come into InDesign, I'm going to File and Place. And go onto my desktop, find my little parrot that I've just cut out. Here he is, the Photoshop file again, not the, uh, not the JPEG. And place it in here. Okay, so what I've got is a cutout parrot. Now, if I want to put text around this, I'm going to use my type tool. And if I click and drag to make a text box, and I'll just use my right arrow just to create two text boxes here. So if I was going to do some a couple of paragraphs. And just for this exercise, I'm just going to put some uh, placeholder text in, which is, again, just sort of Latin text for us to have a little play around with. So fill with placeholder text there. Okay, so now I've got my parrot and I've got my text. So I'll click on my parrot. I'm just going to right-click arrange and bring him to the front okay so the benefit that we've got here you can see there's no white background on this parrot because I've cut him out but the text is going behind it so what I'm going to do now is go to a window come down to my text wrap okay and we've got options to turn the text wrap on there and I've also got an option to wrap around the object shape so I'm going to click on the wrap around object shape now the thing is it's not coming around the parrot still because it's seeing the area still being square. So what I can do here, if I come down to the bottom, so it says same as clipping, I can actually come to detect edges. Because I have cut it out, there's no background there. When I click on this option, you can see InDesign will detect where the edge of that image is. And again, I can increase there to choose the distance that that text wrap is away. So you can see there, really efficient way of using Photoshop and InDesign together. And again, this is all active, so if I'm not happy with the cutout, I can come back to Photoshop, I can edit it, I can save it, and when I come back to InDesign, it will automatically update itself as well.